awkward. And there you are. Thank you, creepy voice that they just installed. All right. Uh, did not know they did that now. Can you guys hear that? Did you hear that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. Super cool. weird. That was not there. Yeah, Thank you. That was we not heard there it. Last time. That was All weird. Right. Good. It was okay. kind of scary, you know, because of privacy stuff, because your camera's being shown. That's true. I guess so. Well, at least you all know now. So if there was anything. But yes, we are being recorded. So, oh, y'all ready for this? Let's hop into it. What? Never mind. All right. So today, as you already know, we are going to be covering strings and arrays. Like TA or TF Sean said, he loves arrays. So do I. I also love strings. And if you couldn't get it, I couldn't find something that would have like strings and arrays attached to it, really. So I was like, oh, finger quotes, because we all love finger quotes, because it's because it's strings, right? Right? We do like little quotes around strings. Anyway, I thought it was fun. So that's all that matters. All right. Let's get going here. All right. People, you are annotating my stuff, and I don't know if it's, if I find out who it is, I swear. Oh my gosh, let me clear all my drawings here. Clear all drawings. And now I have to go into security. There we go. <sighs> I will find out who keeps annotating my stuff with stars and sparkles and all that. Gosh darn it. All right, <laughs> let's hop into it. Part one for assignment one is due today. So as we already covered, or as we kind of spoke about previously, but anyone that here is now just joining, part one for assignment one due today. Make sure you get your TF involved. Let them know that it's there. Get it created. Second part, part two. We are, uh, so part two of the assignment one will be due on June 3rd. So that's going to be the second out of three parts. And then finally, come on. Part three due on June 7th at 5.30 p.m. Central Time. Part three is extremely important because it is our last part that needs to be graded. As I already mentioned today, assignment one is a very important assignment because it's our first cutoff assignment. A cutoff assignment, as you probably already know, means that if it is not completed and successfully turned in, unfortunately, we can't continue our launch code journey together. So make sure that you turn in part two, part three, and stay on top of it because assignment one is extremely, extremely important. Finally, we have studio review tonight at 8 p.m. Again, I do highly recommend that everyone comes. Uh, please, please, please at least do show up. Uh, this will be one of the last ones that will be, uh, be kind of mandatory. Of course, I will always have them, but I, I don't always force that because I do want to give you as much time as you need with your groups. So, Are we um, also, are we going to have class on Memorial Day or are we off on Memorial Day? There will be no class on Monday. So yeah, I'll get to that in a second. Uh, as for the assignments and the grading, it will still not be graded yet. The grader is not set up in GitHub. That's why you need to bring your TF and get that graded one-on-one. -on -one. So let your TFs know that your assignment's done so they can get that graded and entered in. To the gradebook. Was all of part one due? Yes, all of part one is due. Um, I will get... I haven't looked at specifically at those locations. Do, 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 do. Oh, it's um, kind of confusing, and I'm going to sorry, Kyle, to step in. Please, thank it's you. Kind of confusing. Canvas is your sole source of truth. Um, the assignment is kind of written, if you're reading the assignment instructions, part one goes through the minimum viable quiz, um, which is actually a little further than part one that is due today. That actually moves closer into what you would consider part two. If you look at the assignment replet itself, um, and I can, um, so I'm gonna share my screen real quick, just as uh, if, sorry to boot you, Kyle, real quick, because I understand this is kind of, this is a little confusing. Um, so if you actually, once you open this up as a replet, you'll see that there are a whole bunch of to-dos. Um, and today, I asked you to do all the 1.1 to to-dos. That is, define a candidate name, ask for the candidate name, and then you actually do that a second time in this run program function. It so is we don't know 1.2, just the 1.1, right? So that is 1.1 is what is due today. And then okay. 1.2 is what is due, all the 1.2 parts is what is due next Thursday. 
and all the one point, all the to do number two, that is what's due. That is basically the final. Okay. That is, that's what I, that's what I thought, but I yeah. was confused by the whole entirety of the part one. Yeah. And the part one. So I broke up, I essentially, what I did is I broke up part one of the instructions into part 1.1 and 1.2. And I understand that might be confusing, which is why I wanted to share real quick. Um, Kyle, I will give you your sharing powers back. Thank you. For That's a really good idea. I appreciate that, man. Yeah, they, we understand that this code is a little bit, you're seeing a lot of code you've never seen before. Um, you don't know functions yet. You will in like a week and a half. But you, since there's a whole lot of new information, trying to break it up and make it uh, as manageable as possible. Um, quick question. What time today is it due? Uh, it's technically due at 5.30. Um, but we understand this is, this is the first one. The actual drop assignment is where it matters. Is that June, June 7th at 5.30, the full assignment? That's the one that's the real hard deadline. Um, if you didn't get it in by 5.30, part one in by 5.30 today, get it in as soon as you can. Same thing with part two. Get it in as soon as, as soon as you can. But part three, part three is the one that really matters. That is the drop deadline. I get no control over it. We get very little flexibility unless, you've, unless you reach out to me um, and have a major emergency. I probably don't have the flexibility uh, if you don't finish by the 7th. So that part three, which is the full assignment, passing all the GitHub auto grader grades, that's the one that matters. Well, I have it as accommodation. So is that different? Yeah. If you have an accommodation that you have previously talked to me, or if I have previously told you, you know, you have a, a later date, that that is something that, you know, we've talked already. Um, and if you believe that you also have an accommodation or if there's other things that you know, you know, please bring them to me via Slack. Mark, real quick, um, we got a quick question about uh, the submission for the assignment. Do they send the link to the TAs um, or submit it through Canvas? Submit it through Canvas just to get practice. So, I really hate Canvas. Canvas is so unfun. <laughs> Uh, excuse me. Um, I think I accidentally did the 1.2 questions as well, and I submitted it to you. You're ahead of the game. Okay. Great. Just resubmit. Just make sure you resubmit that. Um, yeah. We understand that, like, when I, the TAs and I, <coughs> we understand that because this is, you are always working in the same document and in the same program. When I look at, if I were to look at, you know, yours, on to like on this Thursday, maybe you've worked a little further than what you submitted today. Okay. Um, it's basically have you met that minimum bar? If you've worked past it, great, love to see it. Thank you. I still have okay, a good just to, to clarify, there's 1.1 1 .1 was due today, 1.2 is due on the third. Yes. Is that correct? But then yep. there's also part two. Part two is essentially guiding you through so you are finishing the full thing. And that is where, you know, make sure that it will pass all the auto grader tests by the time you finish okay. part two. You may need to do some slight modifications of the parts you've written pri previously, um, depending on how you wrote them to get it to pass the full auto grader. Right. And then part three is grade the quiz. In that, right? That's what it's. That's how it's described. Is that how it's described in the? That's how it's described in the instructions. Yeah, in the so so I am when I refer to um, the one point one and two. Um, mm -hmm. I believe I am referring to. Um, I am refer. I am solely referring to how it's the to dos are described in Replit. Um, right. Basically, what you need to know is that part three do on due on the seventh is the yeah. full completed assignment. Okay. Um, either so breaking it up. As, yeah. 
sorry, is the entire code then included in, in the replit that we've, we started working on? Yep. The entire yep. thing is there. Yep, you're never gonna, okay. you're always, for the candidate testing, you are always gonna use that original, that replit that you started. Okay, okay. Thanks for those Do questions. Do we get graded for assignment zero? Uh, yeah, but the grade is basically, did you do it? Um, if, you, if you got it to pass and got all three systems talking to each other, then you get a uh, one out of one. Okay. So I have a question. So how we can check that, like, we're graded? I know, like, uh, we got that, like, one point for zero. Yeah, I'm in the middle of something. I'm so sorry. I'm so it's okay, Myron. Don't worry about it, man. It's okay. I'm just asking how we can check the grades. So if you saw when you turned it in, mm -hmm. um, if you got that green check mark um, that shows you passed the auto grader, mm -hmm. that is a 100% guarantee that you pass the quiz or you pass the assignment. That mm -hmm. is, you know, and basically the TA entering your grade is mm -hmm. just a formality. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. but, but the TAs will be entering grades for them. Um, but that being said, <laughs> confusing, um, because the auto grader is looking at all three parts mm -hmm. of these assignments, you mm -hmm. will not necessarily pass all the tests for part, before you get to part three of assignment one. Um, because we can't, we can't turn off just selective parts of the auto grader. The auto grader is always going to be looking for all, I think, 19 tests to pass. Okay. And one more question. Uh, like uh, when we start the second part two uh, of this assignment, so then we have to repeat all these steps, what we have done today or no? So your replit is going to be the same one, the same replit and the same GitHub repository you're going to be using all throughout this. Same. So we accept the invitation and we... So sure. once you've accepted the invitation, you're good to go for, for here on out. You don't need to redo that for part two or part three. Okay. And today, uh, I had one problem. I almost uh, uh, did the 1.2. And even I checked the output with that and everything was fine. I don't know what happened in the and I got the one sign and I got error because of that. And that time nobody like no TF available. So I just uh, uh, I couldn't submit at 5.30, so is that okay? Yeah, just make sure you submit. Submit what you have. The um, goal is that you are making progress on this because this is, this is not a small assignment and there are a lot of concepts, so we break it up as a way to make sure you're getting feedback throughout and you're making progress throughout. But after this class, I will discuss that uh, error with my TA. Yep, absolutely. And I will submit. Is that okay to you guys? Perfect. Thank you. Hey guys, I would like to point out that um, if you don't put batteries in your fire alarm, bad things can happen. And it's a little obnoxious if you could please, please maybe mute. If that's you, I would really appreciate it. Hey, uh, Clark, I've got one final question on 1.1 1 .1, okay, uh, cool. for the final assignment. So I noticed that it kind of, the, the to-do statements within the program itself and the actual instructions that are on the launch code uh, dashboard are completely contradicting themselves. You wanna, so, um, yeah, do you wanna shoot me some screenshots and I will take a look? Okay, uh, yeah, no, no worries. Yeah, not, sorry, that is, is not meant to be dismissive. I just know that I, I know my brain will not follow looking at those two things without the visual input. So shoot me some screenshots and um, we will take a look. Um, for the most part, the to-dos were built out as a way more or less to scaffold. Um, so you can start off with something that's relatively comparatively simpler, like asking someone's name, and then it builds to getting harder and harder. So they are kind of, when you think about you're building a building, Essentially, you, you make a scaffold to work off of, and that is essentially what the to-dos are. They are the framework. Um, no, I understand. It's just telling you, like for 1.1c, it's telling you to do something completely different in the program than what it is in the instructions. I'm okay. saying, I, I, I've got it based off the instructions that were on the dashboard, but I was just, I, mean, I, know, yeah. I know that if I noticed it, somebody else might have noticed it and had an issue with it. Okay, let me yeah, take a look. Can you, yes. Yeah, 
please shoot me that as a Slack message with a screenshot, and I will do some deep digging into which way the auto grader asks for the, the grade so that you are, the auto grader will cooperate with you. Okay, Roger that. I'm in the process of doing it now. Perfect. Appreciate it. I'm going to give Kyle back this if you have any other questions so we don't, uh, I know that this is intimidating. It's the first assignment, um, but I'm going to give this back to Kyle. And if you have questions about the code, ask your TA. If you have a question about like the semantics of the assignment itself, like uh, something about the due date or like what uh, we just got with the, the discrepancy in the instructions, that's my, my domain. Questions, questions that have to do with like the ass big assignment are for me, questions about your code itself. That's for your TF, but for now, I'm going to give this, the uh, time back to Kyle because we have a lot to cover today. Awesome. Thank you very much, Clark. Yes, I hopefully that got a lot of questions out there. Um, yeah, so we're going to hop right into it because we do have a lot to cover today. I'm going to need every minute I possibly can to get through everything and get all the questions answered. So uh, last thing, like I said, studio review tonight at eight, please be there. We're going to go over that studio. We're going to go over any questions you have. Um, and yeah, that's really it. So let's dive into it. Before anything, of course, we are going to just remember it's been a whole weekend since we last talked. So we're going to just look at how much we've learned in just five days, two classes. We have learned a ton of material. So let's just go through that real quick and just see what we remember. Hopefully enough of it. So how would we create a variable called pet name with a value of Bella? What would we start with? Who can tell me? Let, 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 let pet name cons. equal I hear cons. Bella. Cons, because cons. pet names do not change. Remember, when we are creating variables, the first question we need to ask ourselves is, is it a let or is it a const? Pet names don't change. So therefore, it's going to be a const. The next word I already heard too is pet name. Pet name is the name of our variable. And then finally, Bella is a string. So we say equals to Bella. So just remember, always check out if it's a let or a const. Now let's add a few, one more line of code here. And then we're gonna place a console log. Can someone tell me, is this going to work? No. No, no. it's not. No. It is no. not. Very good. Not at all. Because how do algorithms work? How does our computer read? Sequential. Sequential. Sequentially one after the other. So therefore, pet message on this first line of code doesn't exist yet. It will start existing on our third line of code, so it definitely won't work. Very good. So we need to place <clears> it down there. This is how we could actually make that work. So let's continue. So how would we set pet message to high Stark only? If the pet name is Stark, what concept or tool are we going to use to do this? If, if statement. If statement. Yeah. Very good. So how many write this if statement? How would we start to write it? If, if parentheses. Pet name. Parentheses. Pet name. Pet name. Pet name. Pet name. Exactly. In parentheses. Triple so, equal, 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 equal. There it is. Oh, right. equals Stark. And then Arc, Stark and Arc, quotes. Arc, Arc. Stark and quotes. And then end our parentheses. Then curly curly brackets. brackets. Very good. <laughs> Love it. Curly brackets. Fantastic. And then finally, we put our message in there. So pet message equals high Stark. Remember, when we do this, we're reassigning, reassigning our pet message variable to something different. So now when we console log this, it will actually print high Stark instead of an empty string. So we're gonna continue on here. How do we set pet message to hello Bella only if the pet name is equal to Bella? <laughs> what do we do here? Uh, you need an else message. Okay. Else statement? We have an else, but else. one thing about this else statement is that it if. also else has if. a conditional in itself. So else if, very else good. If. We, we start with that parentheses and then help me write this last part. Pet name. Pet name. Uh, triple triple equals, equals Bella. 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 With Very good. And then we set that pet may a pet message to hello Bella. Then We're finally, our last bit of thing. How would we set pet message to who let this dog out if it is any oh. other name? Else. Else. Yes. Else. 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 Very good. Any other name. Yes. Anything right else. Which curly brackets in our pet message. Very good. 
Remember, else is anything else. So this is all basically our catch all here for our if statements. So if it's not start, if it's not Bella, it will go to our else statement and reassign pet message to who let the dog out. This is how we do our if statements. So very good, everybody. Give me one second here and I'll let everyone take a quick break there. I have forgot to open up one of my browsers. Give me one second here. Do, 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 do. Get to stare at my beautiful background. Just remember that I have to do this. And it's I, I like that background. Time. Thank you. It is the Catalina stock image background, but I've never seen Catalina. So I was like, oh, I like that. I'll just keep it. Okay, there we go. And come on, roughly. Downloading files, doing a bunch of stuff. There we go. Take that out. Fantastic. Full screen, yeah. And we're back. Let me go start up our stuff again. Play from code side. All right, we already did our F statements here. So, do, do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. All right, so we come over here and we're going to make sure that that still works. So, like we said, we said const pet name equals Stark. And then we said if our pet name triple equals to Stark, then we're going to reassign our pet message to hello Stark. Uh oh. No, come back, mouse. Where are you at? There we go. So let's get that. Let pet message equals blank quotes there. So we say in here, pet message equals hello Stark. And like we said, we have to do that else if. So we say pet name, and there we go, equals to Bella. Then we say pet message equals to you. Hello, Bella. I think I said hi, whatever. Oh. I think it was hi, Stark. And there we go. And then finally, our catch all, the else statement. Pet message equals to who let this dog out? There we go. And then finally, to actually display our message, what do we need to use? Council.log. I saw people wording it with their mouth, so I'm going to take that pet message. <laughs> Like how everyone just whispers to themselves, yes, yes, very good, exactly. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. We get a high Stark, awesome. We're gonna switch it to Bella. Run that, we get a hello Bella. And then finally that poor, poor pup Toby. What does he do? Ah, who let this dog out? Poor Toby, everyone, to everyone yells at Toby. Hopefully we don't have a Toby in this class, we probably do. So sorry if I'm just making fun of this dog Toby, but he's probably a great dog. Anyway, so this is how we do our if statements, just bringing that back in here. So let's continue on. We have our pet name here, our pet message, and our pet age equal to six. But my question is, is how would we set the pet message to a grown pup if the pet age is equal to six? Someone help me write this. Jason, go for it. Or All Caleb, right. I see both of you guys. Want to do it? Oh, okay. So uh, you said uh, pup name. So what I would do? Uh, pet age uh, is six. Pet age is six. So what do we start with? Uh, if very good. Uh, parentheses. Uh, pet age triple equals six. Very good. And uh, parentheses. There you go. Curly brackets, and, uh, always are curly right brackets. Right on, Jason. Exactly, very good, which I know is right on the tip of your tongue. Don't forget those curly brackets. That is extremely important. So very, Actually, very good. I was going to ask you a question because something kind of boggled me too. So I know Go we're trying it. to train ourselves uh, to keep uh, keep in mind the semicolon. So if we put a semicolon behind that parentheses right there on the if line, would that cause an error, a syntax error? or It absolutely would. If we put a okay. semicolon there, what it's telling it is to stop at this line. That's what a semicolon says. It says, stop okay. here, this is the end of my code. But it isn't. We have these curly brackets that has a very important clause, or then clause, inside of it. So if we run this, we're going to get a big old block of code Gotcha. Here. Okay. Great question. 
Thank you for asking that question because I was thinking the same thing, Loki. Hey, if you guys <laughs> right think on. of that question, please don't hesitate to ask. It's absolutely great question. Great question. A related right. question. Uh, yeah. I don't understand why there's a semicolon at the end of pet message equals a grown pup because it's inside the brackets. Mm -hmm. So multiple lines of code can be inside of these brackets. So I can say pet message is this. I can say if my pet age wants to change equals to zero, things like that. I'm going to have multiple lines of additional code within these curly brackets. So oh. yes, we absolutely do have to have these uh, these stoppers here, these semicolons here, because our compiler needs to know line by line, because our compilers work line by line. So we need to have those semicolons there to tell them this is the end of this line. I'm going to go to the next one. So that's why we include those inside of the curly brackets. The curly brackets just means this is a paragraph. This is my then clause. This is what I'm going to put inside of there. So it. Does that kind of help? Yeah. The, thank you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. For sure. Any other questions about this before we move on? I have a question. Yeah, go for it, Gene. Uh, I mean, I wonder if we we'll make a difference to reassign the pet message before the if statement. Like right after declaring the first three variable, we reassign the pet message to a grown up. Then we start the if statement. So if we did that, then there's nothing protecting our pet message from being reassigned if our pet age was any other number but six. We only want to show a grown pup if the pet age is six. Okay. If the pet age is five and we have it above the if statement, then our pet message still gets reassigned. We can see that here. If I said, where's my mouse? Come here. If I said pet message here of hi Stark, mm -hmm commenting that out and taking that out. We only have that if statement in there, like we kind of do here. We'll just bring, you know what, we'll bring in that actual example so we don't have to do that confusion. Pet age is equal to six. Our pet message up here, a grown pup, our pet age has to equal to six, like that. If we do this, our pet age is equal to six. We're gonna say our pet now is one, a very young pup. We run this and it still says a grown pup. If we place this, uh, this line of code inside of the if statement, it doesn't print anything because it's protected. That's what this if statement is doing. It's protecting it because pet age is not equal to six. The mm. only way we can get that reassignment is if our pet age is equal to six and run that, then our if statement actually triggers. So remember, if statements are there to protect that reassignment or any other lines of code from when it's not an actual clause. Does that kind of help? Yeah, it makes sense to me. Yeah, thank you. Awesome. Absolutely, great question. Anybody else? All right, then let's keep going. We're gonna take a little bit further deep into here. What about if Bella is older than the age of one? Then I want to say she's a grown pup. What would my conditional look like for this one? F. If. F. Bella. If pet age. I like. Sorry. Also, Bells. please feel free to keep out the pet name on this one. I, I assume that might have been confusing. I apologize. We're just going to do a pet age here. So I heard pet, pet age. age. If pet age is greater than one. Very good, it's greater than one, awesome job. So very, very good. In this one thing we didn't actually, there we go. And that's one thing we actually didn't talk about too much is that we only have done equals and not equals in lecture. Though I'm sure you all are getting more familiar with the other symbols. So what we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna chat real quick about these different little operators. So we're gonna be comparing some comparators. And the one that we just looked at was called a greater than symbol. This is checking if the left side is greater than the right side. What that means is that if we have five, is uh, five on the left side and 10 on the right side, we're asking is five greater than 10? Is five greater than 10? No, five is not greater than 10, so it's definitely false. Looking at another one, three less, or is three less than three, or sorry, is three greater than three? 
Well, three is not greater than three. Three is three, so this is also false. This is one of our symbols. So let's add one more thing to it. Let's say greater than or equal to. This is another comparator. So we can ask, is five greater than or equal to 10? Well, this is also false. Five is still less than 10, so this does not change. But let's look at the other one. Is three greater than or equal to three? This is actually true. So this is kind of why we can use that greater than or equal to to kind of help us out here. Let's move on. This one is, of course, the opposite, less than the less than symbol. So we have five less than 10. Is five less than 10? It sure is. So this is going to be true. Same with three. Is three less than three? No, three is three. So this is false. I know this is super exciting. So is this <laughs> the final one, the fourth one we have is less than or equal to? So this is our fourth one that we need to learn about. Is five less than or equal to 10? It absolutely is. So this is true. That's how we can check this. And then finally, is three less than or equal to three? Well, three is equal to three. So this is technically true. This is how these operators work. I know this is not the most exciting part of this, but it is extremely important when we're doing our logic math. Unfortunately, there is math out there that has to deal with truths and false. This is it. So just making sure that we all understand this. The final two comparators that we have to go through are always the equal to and not equal to, which you've already covered. So congratulations, we don't have to go through any examples there. So these are the six comparators that you're going to see in your conditional statements. Now take a deep breath, have a big yawn, grab a cup of coffee, and we're going to go into some quick examples with it. So oh, real quick, real quick, just want to show you this. If we want to do our pet age where the pet age is only showing if it's greater than six, I'm going to say pet age greater than six here. Or sorry, no, nah, we're not going to do that. It's greater than one. We're going to say the age of one is a young pup and any other age is going to be a grown pup. So here we have pet age, which is going to be one. So we're going to run this. It's not going to be a grown pup. We have the pet age of two. Pet age is two, which is greater than one. Therefore, we get a grown pup. Does this remind everybody of like eighth grade math? Like, is two greater than one? Like, which one gets like the little alligator mouth? Like, which one eats which? Kind of. Yeah, kind of, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if you, uh, I'm sorry, just there be cow. Um, so if ahead. you had to change the uh, uh, line five, let pet age equal one, and then you would change uh, a to if pet age is uh, greater than equal one, then it would still return a grown pup. Absolutely. Go. Very good call out. Right on, yep. Jason. That is it. Awesome. Question. Any other questions? Yes, please. The quotation marks on uh, line four, are they necessary? Technically, no. We could just put it like this. Um, and that would just be for something we haven't talked about, but it would just be called undefined, meaning we haven't defined it as anything. Mm -hmm. I just put the empty quotes in there just because it's honestly part of my OCD. Uh, during uh, my own code, I, I never leave anything on a sign. So that's why I put it in there. But technically, we can do this. That's completely fine too. Put zero in there and we'll see our new friend, undefined. So as you can see, it says undefined up there. That means nothing has gone into this variable. It's basically an empty slot. We haven't talked about it too much, but this is a good way to kind of just introduce you guys. Does that kind of help, Diamond? Uh, uh, add a quick uh, question. If you put the greater than, equal, uh, or greater than or less than sign on the other side of the equal sign, does it become like a bit operator? Like, is it the... this one? Yeah. Technically, it is a different operator. So I would just say, don't do that. Yeah. That is, it means, sure. yeah, yep. That means something different in JavaScript. So, uh, yes, we want to keep it our comparator, the less, uh, less than or greater than sign on the left hand side and the equals, equals, <laughs> equal symbol on the right hand side. So, thank you. Great question. <laughs> Absolutely. Fun fact, I didn't know my lesson writes too well. I was always 50-50 on them to like age 14. But anyway, random Kyle fact. I always right? just I know, raise like, my left hand or my right hand. I did too. Yes. Yeah. Like, oh. See? Then I'd be like, which one is left? And I had to spell out left there. Yeah. I was planning on getting an L and an R tattooed on my wrist just as like a, a backup. That you is know? dedication. <laughs> I wow. I would always just think about which hand do I write with. And I just remembered... Whichever one I wrote with was my life.
that's what I need. Yep, I need to do that. But now I know it. Yeah, didn't know it was less than rice in 14, but here I am teaching you guys. Great. So does it matter? <laughs> on which side it, you do it on? It does matter. The, uh, the less than or greater sign symbol has to be on the left-hand side of the equal sign. The equal sign has to be on the right-hand side. Okay, so and, definitely, I definitely didn't learn it, and I didn't learn alligators. I learned Pac-Man. Yeah, I like that too. Pac-Man, uh, that's a good one. Uh, yeah. My math one, teachers really actually like... fought over which one was the correct one, Pac-Man or the alligator. <laughs> oh my gosh. That is an intense math teacher. That is passion right there. <laughs> All right, everybody, let's keep going here. So we're back to comparators. Now we're gonna get a little bit more intricate. I'm gonna ask, what if the pet age needs to be, be between one and six to say a grown pup? What are we gonna do? Because after six, it's gonna be an old pup. Let's start you out. You have if or dog age. This is it's greater than or equal to six. Or greater than or equal greater to than one. one of less than yes. six. Yes. <laughs> then we would do an if else on less than six. six. Yeah, would it be? I like all these answers. Uh, 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 but all right. all right. I'm gonna mute everybody there. I love all the answers. I'm getting a lot of mixes in here, so we're just gonna talk through it here. I love all of them and probably got the right answer out there. So what it is is that you are going to uh, do if dog age is greater than or equal to one but it needs to be, to be between one and six. So we use the and operator. And dog then age dog age? age, oh, it would be pet age. I apologize. I have a small typo there. It'd be pet age here. Pet age is greater than or equal to one and pet age or dog age, because of my typo, is less than or equal to six. And then we put our message here. This is putting constraints between a starting and ending number now. Again, dog age should be pet age. This is just a typo. I apologize for that. But this is how we do our constraints. One to six is now a grown pup. So if we go over to our code and we utilize that, we say ampersands pet age is greater or less than or equal to six. Now it will say a grown pup only when it's six. So right now, if we ran this, we get nothing. If we say three, which is between one and six, we get a grown pup. If we put nine, which is outside of that range, we get nothing again. This is how we do constraints between two numbers. So this is how those uh, comparators can really come in handy when we're trying to compare between two numbers. And heavy hint, this will be something that you'll definitely see on your future assignments. So definitely take note of this. Is there a way to do or instead of and? For between one and six, it would be a little bit more difficult because you'd have to do the negation of every other number besides the ones one through six. So you definitely can. I'm not gonna go through that example just yet. If you are really curious, re, uh, uh, definitely DM me and I can give you that example, but you can technically do ORS. It's just not very fun. Hey, just quickly. Um, it seems yeah. like it would be fun if you're saying it's not very fun because I like that kind of stuff. Well, I think Arnold yep. was trying to talk. Yeah, if, if you're done, I, I don't want to interrupt. Um, Go ahead. Yeah, I, I'm just, I'm, I've been kind of coding along while, while you're talking, and I'm getting a syntax error on the uh, uh, less than or equal to sign. I'm not sure why. So for the less than and equal signs, just make yeah. sure that that symbol is on the left-hand side of the equals, uh -huh. and then your pet ages are being used. So this is the code here. So double check on where the line, it's telling you what the syntax error is at. Make sure there's no mm -hmm. additional characters or anything like that. Um, but double check your code, but definitely check out that line that it's telling you about. If you still can't get it, feel free to direct message me or put it into the general sure. uh, lecture chat to see if there's something maybe somebody else can see. Sure. Yeah, I won't, I won't go into it right now, but I'll just- No, 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 you're good, um, you're good. Cool. Um, yeah, if you find question. it, let me know. Yes, go ahead. Um, so you just did, um, like a, if for the dog age is either greater than this age and less than this age, could you do something with the ands um, where you're like, okay, the dog 
has to be named Toby and be two years old, like because it's age and name. Can you do yeah. different ones like that? Of course. So and the pet and? age here, the pet age you said it should be two. So we say equal to two. And you told me that the pet name has to be Toby. So that would be the conditional that you just described to me. Basically what you say, so it has to, the Toby has to be two. You say that the name has to be Toby and the age has to be two. So this is how we would write that. Does that answer your question or did you want something additional? I was just curious if it was, um, because the first example was both ages. Mm -hmm. If it would be the same if you were doing the name and the age or, you know, the type of animal and the name, you know what I mean? Like the, because your answer is a number and then a string yeah, as opposed to both so numbers. For sure. And though these, remember, these conditionals are completely separate from each other. So we can chain as many different conditionals, checking different things as we want with the ampersand or the or sign. So yes, a great question. It does not matter if you're checking a string in your conditional or a number in another conditional, they can be chained together completely like this to create a statement. Okay. Does that help? Or did you want any other? Yeah, did you want another? Yeah, when you were going through it, there was something that popped into my head that was, um, well, it only works because it's numbers. And that might be something else, but I just, with the double amp and the numbers, I was like, oh, wait. Like, I wonder sure. if the types could be different. Yeah, the types absolutely can be different. Like we said right here, so pet message equals it works. So yes, the types can definitely be different in different conditionals here. So this is a conditional and this is a conditional and it's chained together using the ampersand. Here up here, we have Toby and I'm gonna change the pet age to two. So it actually does run. We go through it and it says it works. So these can be different data types that we're checking. I can also say, and is good boy equal to true. We can check another Boolean here and we can have a variable here that says is good boy equals to true. So we can chain these as much as we want. So as long as you've defined it first, you can, you can just have at it with pages and pages of. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. If that's what your conditional requires to protect your code from something, yeah, it definitely can. As many as conditions that need to be true as possible, you can throw them into that if statement. I'm, I'm just kind of messing around here. And um, I think one of my conditionals isn't a defined uh, variable, but it's, it's letting me do it. Is that right? Or am I misreading what I've written here? Uh, it might be true. Um, we'd have to look at it individually. Uh, another warning again is that JavaScript is very, very forgiving. So if you haven't defined a variable. Um, it usually should give a syntax error if you have not defined the variable. So you might have defined a different capacity. If you haven't assigned it to any kind of value, technically, when it's not assigned to anything, any kind of value, aka undefined, what we already discussed previously, it's actually false. So that might be something that's happening as well. If you want to take a look at it one on one, feel free to reach out to your TF or DM me that code directly and we can take a look. Otherwise, if we have time at the end, I'm happy to go through that too. All right. All right. That banana looks really good. <laughs> All right. We're going to continue on. Fine. Here. We're, we're going to take a look at Bella. So this, there we go. All right. So we're going to take a look at Bella. Bella, again, is a data type of string. So we're going to go into here and take a look. So we have a string because we know it's wrapped in those double quotes. This is a string. This is a data type. This is not anything new, but we're going to kind of dive a little bit deeper into it. So if we take a look at Bella a little bit closer, we notice that Bella, a word, is made up of letters. So words are made up of letters. We've known that for quite some time. Same thing with strings. Same different concept, but of course we use different terminology in coding. Instead of words, we say strings. Instead of letters, we say characters. So strings are made up of characters. 
Additionally, we also number, because computers love numbers, these individual characters. Something you should point out here is that we start with the number zero. This is very intentional because computers start at zero. Well, humans typically tend to start at one. So definitely, definitely note that computers start at zero. Is that so, an optical illusion or are the L's, is one higher than the other? One L might be higher a little bit than the other. So good call. Yeah, I, I saw that as well. I do think that the left L is slightly higher than the right L. It is. Unfortunately or fortunately, that does not change the concept of what we are looking at here, where the strings are actually made up of those characters. So good call out. Unfortunately, I'm not totally into the presentation thing. Um, so there might be some more mistakes down the line. Fair warning. All right. So we're looking at the character zero here, which is a B. So one thing I want to, oh, come on. So like we said, these characters are numbered, starting at zero, working to four. And one thing we should be asking ourselves is, okay, if or strings are made up of characters, how do we exactly get those individual characters out of the string and how does it exactly work? So the first thing we need to do is actually assign it to a variable, which in this case, we're gonna assign to pet name. It needs to be actually accessible. So pet name is going to be assigned to Bella. The next thing we need to do is actually call out to that variable, pet name. So we're gonna have the open bracket, Open square bracket is how we call to specific indexes within a string. Specific indexes inside of a string. Next, we actually need to tell it what index. When I say index, I mean those numbers that we see below the letters there. We have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Mm -hmm. These are indexes within our string. If I want to get that capital B out of Bella using pet name there, I call to 0. This is how we call to a specific character within a string. We use a thing called bracket notation. Bracket notation, again, are those square brackets on the right-hand side of the variable, mm -hmm. the string variable, to call to a specific character. Once we've understood how to do this, we can then grab that character and save it to maybe another, um, another variable. Maybe we wanted a char, which, by the way, is short for character. You'll see that a lot. We can save that character, or maybe do something with it. Which, by the way, characters, individual characters, are still strings on JavaScript. They're just a little bit smaller. We could also possibly put it into a console log. We can get that character and actually console log it so we can see what it is. So now that we actually kind of went through this, let's go ahead and take an actual look at what we're talking about here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to comment out all of the stuff that we have below, and I'm going to just want to look at Bella. That's about it. I'm going to say enter here. There you go. And I will ask, remember, if you aren't asking a question, feel free to ask it on the lecture questions channel. But otherwise, please keep yourself on mute. All right. So in here on our pet name, uh, what we need to do is reach out to a specific character. And like we said, we have to start with the variable name. So we say pet name. And then we start with the square bracket, square bracket. JavaScript is zero based numbering, so it does start at zero. Great question, Jackson. So we want to get the first character, which is the capital B, outside of the string. So again, I use the number zero. This is how we actually get that character out. But again, computers do not remember things unless we tell them to. So that's why we need to actually assign it to a possibly a variable. I called it a char inside of our example. So that's what I'm gonna do here. And then finally, I'm gonna console log a char. There we go. We run this and we see all we get back now is the letter B, the capital B character. So this is how we can get those individual characters back. One thing I do wanna call about, out about strings is that these indexes that we're pulling out from are immutable, AKA we cannot just change them. So if I tried to do pet name and I tried to lowercase b or something, so I'd say lowercase b here. That's an uppercase. There we go. Lowercase b. And I run that. It's still going to come back as an uppercase. We can't change strings. We can reassign them, but we can't just change individual indexes. It doesn't let us do that. So take note of that. These are immutable. So I'm going to open up here for any questions about what we just went over.
Anybody at all? Cricket. Yeah. All um, right. So what does one. tour mean again? Okay. Say that again. Means character. What does tour mean again? Char char is short for character. So we have to put that each time we um we do it. Nope. I was just using that as an example. Okay. So I can change this to this is an example. Okay. We use that. And of course, if we run this now, it will say that I don't have a char defined. So I have to then paste this is an example inside of my console log and then run that. There we go. And now we have that be back. I was using that just to tell myself as a developer what I'm saving into that variable, which is a char, a character. So that's why I named it like that. So uh, because character or I guess characters within the string are saved within an in I'm sorry, uh, within an index, is that why they're uh, uh, immutable? They are immutable because strings at their uh, array form are not changeable unless reassigned. So we mm, cannot okay. directly, yeah, we can't directly change uh, string array or string structures yeah. in JavaScript. It does not allow that uh, okay. because they are their own concept. Gotcha. Thank you. Absolutely. And they're their own data type, excuse me, not concept, same data type. But anyway, that is why. So yeah, strings are a little stingy on being changed. They don't like that. Um, any other question about this before we continue on? I have like a question kind of. Go for I it. I was wondering if you could like do more with like um, adding and removing stuff from the strings, like how it was in the exercises. I can possibly do that some of that at the end, where if you want to push or pop things from the array or yeah. from the from the string, okay. we can we'll definitely jump into that. Yep. Okay. There we go. All right. So there's not any other questions. We're gonna hop on down the line here. So we can I come back one over thing. here. I'm Please, sorry, yeah, no, no, you're um, fine. Could you go back to that other screen? Yep. Um if you wanted to, instead of using defining uh, the two variables on four and five. Could you just do um, council log and then inside the parent or inside the uh, parentheses just put um, pet name and then zero inside there, and that would do the same thing. Yep. Is it what you're uh, what you're describing on the screen now? Yes. Perfect. And that would yep. do the run the, that. Okay. Same exact thing. I'm, I usually throw in that extra step just to show that we should reassign stuff to a variable or assign stuff to a variable before we console log it. It is a much better way just to kind of work with it, just so we remember. It's better practice so we can okay. remember to create those yeah. variables. But yes, you absolutely can if you want. Okay. Very good question. All right. Any other buddy or anybody, uh, anybody else have a question? All right, fantastic. So we're going to go back here into sync it into some strings and we're going to bring back our pet name Bella. So one thing I do want to bring up here is that just like strings are a lot like pets. Let's take a look at what I mean by that. If we bring in Bella here, Bella can have a lot of tricks, right? She can maybe shake, maybe she can speak. And if you say speak, she does a wolf. Same with another kind of pet. We have a cat and when you teach your cat to roll over, the cat can definitely roll over. The cat can do ah, a trick. Okay. The okay. dog can do a trick. Same with our strings. Strings can also do tricks, such as maybe I tell my string to go to uppercase. The string obeys and goes to uppercase. Strings can do tricks, which is really, really cool. So let's exactly see what I mean by doing these tricks and how we actually do that. We talked about going to uppercase. So we take this pet name here that's assigned to Bella. I wanted to do a trick. So I want it to go to uppercase. So I say go to uppercase. This right here is how we do make strings do those tricks that we just talked about. But let's actually break this down and see what it's actually doing. The first thing here is pet name. I'm telling my computer which string variable I want to perform the trick. If I wanted Bella to speak, I say Bella speak. If I wanted my cat, I don't even know what good cat name is right now. I can't think of cat name. Sheila, it's gonna be Sheila right now. My cat name is going to be Sheila, and I tell Sheila to roll over, I'm going to say, Sheila, roll over. I want my pet name to be uppercase, so I say pet name to uppercase. 
So I state which variable I actually want to perform the trick. Second, we actually have to tell it what trick to perform. We say to uppercase. So that's what we have here. As we've already discussed during this lecture, I know I use those little more simpler terms, but we always have to have a more nerdy spin on all of our words. So it's not actually a trick. Technically what these are called is it's called a function. We're telling our variables to do a specific function to do something. In this case, capitalize yourself. We know it's a function because it's found with parentheses. We see these parentheses at the end, the open close parentheses. This dictates a function. One more thing about functions, and we'll learn more about these down the road. We're just gonna kinda get our feet a little wet today about them. Functions actually return stuff. But as you know, computers do not remember things unless we absolutely tell them to. So if there's nothing there to remember what was returned from the function, it's forgotten. Therefore, we need to make sure we include a variable there. This is how we get our name or our pet's name to be all uppercase. So let's actually go ahead and see this in action. Like we said, we wanted our capital, or we want to capitalize our pet name. So now I'm gonna ask for your guys' help here. What do we need first to do in order to capitalize our pet name? What was the first thing we pet needed name. to do? Call in pet name. Shift key, shift key. Pet name and the shift key possibly. Pet name and then what are we gonna be calling to? What is it called? Uh, uh, dot to uppercase. Uh, dot to uppercase. Very good. This again is called a what? Starts with an F. Function. 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 Very good. It is called a function. And then finally, functions return something. Something is returned. We need something to remember it. AKA, what do we need to do here? A variable. We need to declare a variable. Very good. A variable. So we're going to say <laughs> not there. I'm but sure that, there's a dictionary say, of functions out there. Like, how are we supposed to know what function is what? So there is, there's a lot of documentation. There are thousands upon thousands of different functions or tricks that different things can do. Some of them can be just remembered off the top of our heads. They're very common ones. To uppercase might be a common one, but out there uh, you have your, um, oh, if one of the TAs can, can help me out here with my Monday brain, uh, MSD or not MSDN, MDN documentation, uh, W3 schools can help you. Those kinds of documents can show you all the functions that are available to you for specific data types like strings here. So you don't, there is cheat sheets out there, but unfortunately it's called documentation, which is not very shiny of a word, but that's what's gonna help you going into the future about all these functions. So uh, hopefully that did help. But here we have our pet name, two uppercase, and then we're gonna save that uppercase into name upper. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna console log name upper. And I'm going to run that. And now we have Bella all capitalized. This is how we just made a string perform a trick. Thank you, Malin, for putting that into the lecture questions channel. Uh, feel free to check that out if you do want to see that documentation. All right, so we just made our string do our first trick. What questions do we have? We just made something do something for us. If that's not mind blowing, I don't know what is here on Monday morning or Monday. Oh gosh, it's afternoon, evening, Monday evening. I need a coffee. So, any questions? So, the question I have, I'm sorry. Want to go? No, you're okay. Good. It's probably so, the same um, thing. Can I just, instead of um, naming the name opera equals pet name, can I just console log pet name dot to uppercase? Absolutely. Like I said before, I'm doing that just for uh, more and more practice. So, yes, you can definitely do this. This still gets us the same exact outcome but it doesn't store it as a variable, so then it doesn't save it, correct? Exactly, so down here, it's gonna have no idea what that is. So like, so if we were to go in later to bring that variable back up, it would still be stored as Bella, all lowercase, instead of being Bella saved at all capital. Well, uh, say that question one more time, just to make sure, and I so, wanna clarify here. That if we were, if we were like later on in the code to go in and bring up that variable again, it wouldn't have saved as Bella in all capitals. It would have saved as Bella in all in how it's saved originally. Correct. Exactly. Okay. So we have that. 
we have two different variables now. We have the name upper and pet name. You see name upper is all uppercase. Well, pet name stayed its original form. I, or I did this so we kept it in two different formats. But hypothetically, if we wanted to, for whatever reason, completely capitalize it and never have a change back. Oop, sorry about that. We got that error there because name upper is not defined. There we go. This is how we can redefine pet name to always be uppercase. But you have to ask yourself, do I never, ever, ever want to have the original spelling of Bella ever again? Because once I do this, it's gone. So make sure you do ask yourself before you do that to a variable. That's why I kept it two different variables there. So in that sense, it wasn't that um, keeping in, in line with the idea that we can't change a string, it just kind of permanently reassigned it a new variable. Is that right? It reassigned, it, it, it created a new variable with this variable in all caps. So yes, it, it just created a new variable with Bella in all caps for it. So we kind of stored two different formats, if you will. So that and way I you can call in either or. Like right, then you can use either or, yep. And I guess to kind of go back to the idea of making sure that it stays capitalized when we set pet name dot two upper to uh, pet name, that didn't change anything. That just took that variable um, and, and made it capitalized and then reassigned it. Is that right? Correct. Uh, this right here is not going to change the original variable. It will not, not, not change the original variable. It's going to do it for it and then return it. So if nothing's here to re remember it, it, all that work just is just disappears. So yeah, very good question. Are the um, parentheses after uh, you want to two uppercase, are they necessary? No, come. Yes, they are absolutely necessary. All functions will have one open and closing parenthesis on it. Will there ever so, be a time where something goes in the in the? There will be. Uh, those, as we see here, log is actually a function because it has parentheses. Mind blown, right? Log is a function, and we actually have something going inside of it. What we want to print out. We haven't talked about exactly what these are called, but. Essentially, we are going to be passing things into those parentheses to do things in the future. As of right now, console log, we're passing things in there. Does that kind of help, Simon? Yeah, it does. Awesome. All right, great questions, everybody. Great, great questions. Anybody else? Yeah, actually, I do have a question for you. Oh, cool. um, so is there a way, so we say uh, the function is uh, to uppercase, but what if we don't want everything to be uppercase? Let's just say, for example, um, Bella's in all lowercase, and we want to make uh, B, the B into an uppercase. Will we be able to put, like, for example, uh, on line number five, where it says uh, let name upper equal, could we put pet name, put a... Uh, put an open bracket, you know, and use the uh, index, a uh, closed bracket, dot to uppercase. Right Technically, on they, you'd be return with a capital B. So you can definitely do this. So like we just said, we can do that bracket notation, or we can even do dot index of or something like that to return that. But right now, that would only be a capital B. So okay. we have to get all the other indexes there. So we'd have to pile it on. We haven't talked about other ways to make this a little bit easier, but you could technically put one here and then we can start spelling out Bella with a lowercase e. Gotcha. Um, essentially, what I would say is that if you want to do that, explore other functions. Two uppercase only does one trick, but remember our string knows a lot of tricks. So there's a lot of things out there to help maybe capitalize things or um, take out certain letters, stuff like that. But we're gonna be using functions to do that. Okay. Could you put bracket notations inside of the two uppercase function parentheses? You would not. No. This parentheses are not going to take anything in. We need to write it exactly like this. This is how we put it here. So bracket notation is only if we want to get the index of something out, or if we, we want to get the index of something out of a string. 
and possibly in the future an array. We haven't talked about that yet, but we use bracket notation to get something out. We wouldn't use bracket notation with this function here uh, necessarily. So any other questions about that? All right, in that case, we're gonna keep going here and we're gonna learn one more trick with strings. In this one, we're gonna have our pet name. In this case, we're gonna do dot length. We're looking at length here. And what this does, it actually returns the length of the string. So for Bella, the length of the string would be five. So that's what we do here. Again, this is going to return something. Therefore, the only way we can actually remember the length of our pet name is actually save it in a variable. This is something that we can do here. Now, one last thing I want to call out here is that we don't have any parentheses at the very end of this length. That's because this is not a function. What this is called is called a property. Properties are, again, another trick that we can have on strings, but it doesn't have any parentheses. It just calls to it and asks for some information, some very, very general information. It doesn't necessarily make it do anything. It's like asking, like, what is your dog's name? Or how many paws does your dog have? It's not asking to capitalize your dog's name. That's actually doing some work. That's actually doing something. So that's the difference between a property and a function. Properties just have some information. Well, functions do something awesome. They do something crazy to a variable or something else along those lines. So that is the difference there. To come over here and actually show you that in the, uh, in the works, let's say let and then name length. I'm going to say pet name dot length. And then I'm going to console log our name length. And now we see we have B and the number five, which is, of course, the length of Bella. So awesome. Is a property like a variable and a method is a function? Methods and functions are actually synonymous. So you'll see method, the name method and function actually being used interchangeably. That is a very, very confusing thing. So definitely do take note of that as well, that you'll see method and function used simultaneously, or not simultaneously, but in the, uh, switched up with each other a lot. So methods and functions are essentially the same exact thing. Uh, properties are alike variables, but remember variables can be reassigned and we create them. But what they do have in common is that they both hold information. So in some regards, they are similar to each other, but can't necessarily be used like each other. Very good question, Maitland. Looking at our example here, any other questions about this? Um, why does, I'm confused why it returns five instead of four, because wouldn't it start on zero? Technically it does, but if I said we had zero through, uh, that's, that's way too far back. If I said we had zero through four, how many numbers is that? Zero, one, two, three, and four. Oh, okay. Okay. So yeah, I know, I know what you mean. <laughs> Trust me, it, it confuses the, the crud out of me as well. But yes, that is absolutely yeah, it will be a length of five, but technically the highest index is four. Very good that's, question. That's very yes. <laughs> yes, it is. That's what happens with zero indexing. Um, very, very, very good question. Any other questions? In what cases would we need to be able to use uh, length? Like what examples do we need it for? Like what is the purpose of it? Don't you ever just want to know the length of a word like supercalifragilis, whatever? Like, I would love to know the length just like that off of it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, you will absolutely be using length. I will not scare you, but it is a lot with loops. So length, it will be an extremely important concept in the near future. And maybe now, maybe just type out a giant thing of like words or maybe like put like Moby Dick or something like in a string and just see how many words or letters or something on there. Kind of cool. I don't know. The world's your oyster. But uh, yes, you'll be using a lot with loops. Kale, God, could you use that length if you wanted to find a certain like indice from like whatever index minus one, you could do like dot length minus one. That would be whatever index you wanted. For sure. I like that. If I put in, I can put in here pet dot length minus let's say two. What letter is gonna be returned? Let's find out L, L as in all caps. So yes, you can absolutely do that. You can use length in your mathematics to find a specific index. Very good call out. 
Uh, um, how come both? How come both order and a number appear? So that's because we have two console logs down here. The first one is the name upper, and then the second one is the name length. So if I comment out oh. one of these, our number will actually disappear. So there we go. Now we only have an L showing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no worries. Yeah. It, it's all in those small details that we have to train ourselves to see. But no, completely great question. Awesome job. Um, anybody else have a question? Yeah. So are all characters within that string um, counted? Like if there were dashes in between the letters? Very good question. Bella is an awesome dog. With that, oh gosh, I don't even want to count that. What is that? Five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 24, 25, 24, 25, 24, 25, 24, 25 something like that. But the point is, is that it will definitely count spaces and exclamation points and the dashes, at signs, anything. So yes, any character within that string will be counted. Very good question. And it is 24. I had it right the first time. I thought it, I just added one padding because I thought I opened it. Whatever. 24. Not going to buy a lottery ticket today. All right. Any other questions about strings and these functions and these properties and all this fun stuff we're learning? Yeah, actually. Oh, yeah. I, yeah, what's up? I'm sorry. Uh, I, I added a question to, the, uh, to uh, Slack, uh, but I'll ask here. So let's say, for example, if we can back up to indexes real quick. Um, let's say, for example, we have uh, a, a name that's more than 10 digits long. So in the index, could we do an index and inside of the bracket, you know, a double digits, uh, you know, to try to get an index, you know, like, say, for example, uh, a shapeshifter or something like that, and we go, uh, you know, index uh, 11 in the brackets would it actually uh, return uh, that letter uh, in the 11th, uh, the, the 11th character? Absolutely. So it starts at zero, but it goes up to infinity. So okay. it would definitely return that. Uh, just unfortunately, it looks like at 11, uh, it's a space. So we're not going to see anything. So we go to that one, and now we see an A. So gotcha. that means 11 was right here, and 12 is right here. But yeah, okay. absolutely. It just keeps going up. If you do, this is where it gets a little tricky. If you say 100 here, though, you're going to get back an undefined because there's nothing that index 100. That is, doesn't exist. So that's what you'll get back if it doesn't exist as an undefined. Gotcha. That's one thing to point out. Great question. All right. Anything else here? Yeah. Okay. So I have a question. You said with the, with the, them counting the index and counting the spaces too. You said that, I know you said the, the, pull, the, I can't think of the marks right now, the quotation marks and everything else. Am I, am I missing something? If I'm trying to quote it out, I don't see how you got 24. It does not count the quotation marks. Quotation marks mean that it is a string. It is not a part of the string. Okay. It contains the string. Okay. So yeah, uh, so you will you should get 24 here. If you count the quotes, it's 26. So that is not correct. Okay. Do not count the quotes. Yeah, that is containing that string. Um, it seems to me like in that same string, in the, an N is the 11th character and the space the 12th. Start Remember, zero? we started zero. Very good. Yep. Remember, we started oh. zero. <laughs> yep. So B would be zero, and then we move up on from there. All right. So I do want to hear all these questions. If we have time at the end, we'll come back, but I do need to keep going forward here. All right. So we talked about length. Remember, length is going to be very, very important to us. But now we need to talk a little bit about exactly one last thing that our dogs, our pets, and strings have in common. We have our Bell on the left and our pet name on the right. Like we said, our dog can do tricks. It can speak, it can shake, and our pet name can also do tricks. Our string can also do tricks. It can do uppercase and dot length. Even though one's a function and one's a property, we're just calling them tricks in just this case, just to keep it clear in our minds. One thing about a dog though is that it is a thing. It is an object. It contains stuff. It does things. It has fun features about it. It's an object. The same with pet name. It can do things. It has things in it. It has information. It can has functions that do crazy stuff. It's also an object. And this is what they're called. These are called objects. Objects are something that contains information and can do things as well as have a value of its own. 
So this is what an object does. It does stuff. It has stuff inside of it. We aren't going to dive too much into depth about what an object actually is, but this is the beginning of the concept of an object and why we are in object-oriented programming. Objects, again, are a big container of fun things that tricks it can do, information and its own value. That's what an object is. So just keep that in mind. It's nothing too dire right now to remember. Just remember the concept object and that they exist and the string is one of them. All right, let's get to the fun stuff. Which is it? I got some questions for y'all. Feel free on mic. Let it all out. Let me know what you guys think here. Which does not allow variables to be reassigned? Let or const? Const. 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 Very good. Tell me, which one is a function? Our new best friend that we just made. First right. one. Option A. Option A. Option A. Very good. Option A. How do we get a character from a string? Option, option one or two. option two? My two. Option two. Option two. My option two. Very good. Square brackets. Square brackets. Very, very good. Continuing on. What is greater than or equal comparator? One. Left or right? First one. First one. First one. Uh, First one. one. Very good. The left one. Awesome, awesome. Which property or which is a property? Option D or option C? Option, option D. 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 Very good, because it doesn't have those parentheses. D, because it doesn't have those parentheses. It does not, okay. not, not have parentheses. Functions have parentheses. Properties do not. Finally, can someone tell me what the dot over the lowercase i or j is actually called? Uh, no. Oh, no. Oh, oh, wait, you're talking about the I or the J. Oh, my. Index. Index. No, 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 no. This is a more of a fun All fact. This is not an index. This is not an index. This is not a coding question. It's a It's a tittle. 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 Very good. That is what they're called. Learn that today. It's like, oh, that's cool. Put that on there. <laughs> it is what goes over an I or a J to make it a lowercase I or a J. The more you know. <laughs> Titillating. <laughs> Titillating. Ah. Oh, I love that. Ah. Oh, bad jokes for days. Okay, now I'm just muting everybody for that one. All right. Awesome, awesome, everybody. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep moving forward. So, like we said, we're talking about Bella today. Today's Bella's day. Stark had his debut yesterday or last class. We have Bella today. We break Bella down, we put them into its own little blocks here, and we help these blocks, as you've already noticed, help us organize our characters into words. We can actually grab index zero, we can grab index three and get those individual characters. It's organized. This string isn't just ambiguous or like, amb I don't know, nebulous or whatever those words are right now. They're not just sitting in a melting pot. It's actually structured into these blocks to help us as the developer organize our things. So let's talk about our unorganized dog. Bella is a very, very needy dog, which is fine. I love needy dogs because I just want a lot of attention, so I get to play with them a lot. But Bella has a lot of favorite treats, the first one being a tennis ball. She also has a bone. She also has a rope. She has three different favorite treats, and this is as much as I can fit on here. She has a whole long list. Of course, this dog is completely fictitious, but whatever. I think she's going to be needy. Anyway, we need to be able to organize all of Bella's treats. If, we had, if Bella had like 100 favorite treats, do you want to be sitting and typing 100 different variables to save all these things in? Well, I definitely would not. So what we can utilize are those blocks above. Again, we can organize all of our favorite treats into a single thing, a single variable, which these are called arrays. We can take all of this information and put it into one single array, which is all these favorite treats. But the question you should be asking is like, how do we actually create this? What is this, Kyle? What's actually going on? And so we're gonna go through it, don't worry, we're gonna do it. So we have let favorite treats array. I typically put ARR for array. Again, I'm a lazy programmer. Char's, char is a character, ARR is array. So fave treats array. And I wanna take, uh, create an array. So I start with a square bracket. Start with a square bracket. As you can see, there's a theme. Arrays go with square brackets quite a bit. I'm gonna put in tennis ball first, bone, and then rope. I just added three different values into this array called fave treats array, and then close off my square brackets. What I just did was contained three strings into one container. This is extremely powerful and extremely important because instead of creating a hundred different variables, 
all you need is one variable to contain a hundred different values. That saves you a lot of lines of code and a lot of headache trying to search for those dang variable names as you're trying to code. Because you know where it's all at, it's in one variable. Finally, as you saw with strings, strings are kind of stored like variables, or sorry, like arrays. We can grab those individual indexes. Same with arrays, we can use indexes to grab our trees. So say we wanted to maybe get tennis ball here. We can actually just grab tennis ball by saying fave treats array square brackets zero. This is how we would console log it. Let's actually take a look at this. I wanted to create my const fave treats array. What I'm going to do is square brackets here. I'm going to say tennis ball. And then next I'm going to say, what do we have? Bone. And then finally we have rope. Perfect. And what we said we wanted to do was actually get our tennis ball out of this array. So someone tell, talk me through it. I'm going to create a variable here that says my first toy. So someone tell me how I can grab, I did not spell toy right at all. How do I grab tennis ball out of this array? Someone start me out here. Bracket zero. Fave, fave treats zero. array squared bracket zero. Very good. Fave treats array. We have to start with what actual variable we want to get it out of. Okay. Otherwise, it's going to be like, okay, I see square bracket zero. Where, where exactly do you want me to pull out from? So it's fave okay. treats array. We say square zero. And that's where we get that information from. So here we go. And then, of course, we're going to console log now. My first toy. And then I'm going to go ahead and run this. And now we see we're getting back tennis ball here. And I'm going to go ahead and comment out these other console logs above just so we can see exactly what we're getting here. And there we go, tennis ball. If I wanted to get rope, what would I change this to? Three. Okay, treats are eight, three. Two. Very good. Two. Two. Three. Two. Uh, two. I know, I know it's at zero indexing. Three would be undefined. Oh. Two gives us our rope. Remember, zero is our start, and two, at this case, would be our end. So very good. So there we go. This is how we create an array for information and also get things out of it. Okay, so I'm confused. How did you get rope again? Rope is how we put a two into our square brackets. Okay. We need to put what index we want to get out of the array to actually console log it. Furthermore, what if I just console log my favorite treats? Let's just take a look at it. It's actually going to console log the entire array out for us so we can actually see that. So this is just some other things you can play around with. But so each word should... is one index. Say that again, sorry? Each word is one index. Like tennis ball is zero, bone is one, and rope is two. Exactly. And what we can say is that these strings are at each index. Remember, strings are contained in the quotes, not each word, because tennis ball is two words. So I want to make okay. sure that there's no confusion. Okay. But each string is at each index. I'm getting confused with length and stuff. I'm thinking you're doing like the numbers and you put that X for me off completely. Nope. Length would be how we get the actual full length of our array. Dot length is just a helper property. It's a trick that we ask it to do. In this case, we're not asking to do any tricks. We just want information from it. So we just say, hey, give me at index two. Or a better case, give me at index one. Give me back bone. This is how we get information back from an array. Back from an array. If we actually wanted to make it do a trick, as we already have seen, we would say console log dot fave treats dot array dot length. Now we're actually making it do a trick. So a console, come on, that, and then I run this, and now we get back three, which is the length of the array. So this is how we do that. We're making it actually perform a trick now. So let's dive a little bit deeper into it, and maybe that'll get some of these questions out of the way as well. So. Like we said with strings, strings cannot be reassigned. We can't just say, hey, lowercase b uh, at index zero or anything like that. We actually need to make sure uh, we can't change the string. But that doesn't go for all arrays. The array we created here is actually mutable. We can actually change it. 
And this is how we can do that. Say Bilbo doesn't want a tennis ball anymore. We want to change it to beach ball. Well, we'd say fave treats array block zero equals to beach ball. And that actually changes it. So we go over here. We say fave, tr fave treats. Yeah, go ahead. Can we, we can't do that because you did const, right? Wouldn't that have to be let? Wouldn't it? Let's go ahead and take a quick look real quick. I know I'm going to anger a lot of people. We're going to lose a lot. I'm going to lose a lot of friendships today. I know it. I already feel it. I'm just trying to figure out why the length is three. Is it counting by the words? The length of the L length? Length is the amount of words or is amount of strings. It's what's contained in there. Okay. If anything, think that these commas right here are separating them. So we have one, two, three. If we have another array over here, it says const okay. another array that has maybe an array of numbers. We have five, 10, 67, 34, six. What would be the length of this array? Five. Five. Yeah. Very okay. good. <clears throat> is a, uh, sorry. It's, because, it's the, uh, it's all because the numbers you put down is how many numbers you put down there. It's not like, Correct. It's, it's the numbers that are actually in there. It's the amount of numbers in there, not the actual values of the numbers. Yeah. Finally, what do we call, yes. what do we call the things inside an array? Uh, those would be the values at each index. So you can say the values within the array. The value. Um, okay. So five would be the value, but zero would be the index. Got it. And since Layla, I, Layla, I will get to your question here and everyone else's question about that. Don't worry. Uh, John, I heard a question, or is it well, Melanie? Just yeah, just to, so sometimes the the values are strings. Sometimes they could be numbers or whatever. I can also have booleans in here as well too. Arrays can contain anything. Nice. So yeah, great question. Arrays are just containers, and they can, can put whatever you want in them. All right, can a quick question? Can we change if you want to Damn change it. the um, pet name? To array, we just do pet name R A A R R, and then put the um, square um, thing on it. So if I put, remember, this is just the name of a variable. A name of a variable can be anything. It does not, or does not dictate exactly what it's going to be. I put A R R there for my understanding, the human understanding that this is an array. The computer does not care what it's called. So if you wanted to make an array. You can call it whatever you want. So we can say, if you wanted to make pet name into an array, uh, if it's Bella, we can say pet name as an array or something like that. And then what an array of Bella would look like is this. Oh gosh. E. Oh. Oh. Let's see what else we got there. So that would be Bella as an array. But it, again, just putting ARR here does not change anything into an array at all. Do not take that like that. Hey, Kyle. Yes, Melanie. Okay. So looking at the constant favorite treats, array, tennis ball, bone, rope, could you do something where you can pick out tennis ball as like the index to get the zero and then do length like if you want to find out you want to get the b from ball well for sure well, let's let's talk about that so maybe i don't reassign it to beach ball um here i got zero which at the zeroth index is what value tennis ball and what is its data type string string so this value's data type is a string does the string have the string has a certain trick up its sleeve we can use length on a string so what this is going to do is actually return us the length of tennis ball. Because we can call to the zero at the red. So that's what we did here. So we called the value, which is a string. We called the tennis ball, which is a string. And then we got the length of that string, which tennis ball is 11 characters, which is including that space. But I could, I could also go in and have it tell me where the B is? 
You can. We'll learn about that one. That's gonna. That's you're gonna use another function. No, that's fine. That. I was just. I was wondering if that was a. Yeah, a, absolutely. So you can say index of, you can have it do. which is something we haven't learned yet. But we can say index of that b, and then it will absolutely return it to you. So uh, I got a question. So why does the why does it count um, the space? Why does it count the space? Yeah, why does it count the space? Because I'm sitting here counting. I'm like, wait, wait a minute, there's 10 characters, but like, why does it count the space? Computers do not differentiate between the alpha character or an, a semicolon or an uh, a exclamation point or a space. It will count a character as a character. The okay. space is actually a character. A dash is a character. A B is a character. It will so count we don't characters. count the, the quotation marks. We don't count those. Not the quotation marks. Those are the container for okay. the string. Okay. Very good question. And then finally, Layla, your question, which is very, very important. Real quick, I do want to go over this. Um, Hello. Why we? Uh, Nia. Yeah. Uh, so, what is the difference between an empty string and an empty array? An empty string. An empty it would be. String, it would be. Uh, so an empty string and an empty array, an empty string is no characters and an empty array means nothing's contained in them. An array and a string are two different things. An array is a container, it's a jar. A string is something that can go inside of that jar. So it's actually data. So you're talking about a container and data. So an empty string means there's no data. An empty, con uh, empty array means there's nothing inside of that container. The cookie jar is empty. Because the cookie's over here, or is it, the string would be technically the cookie, and the cookie jar would be the array. So hopefully that it kind of helps out. But essentially, what you're asking me is like, what do both mean? They both mean that there's no data. What no an empty string means there's no data, and an empty array means there's nothing to contain. There's no information to contain. So I know this is a lot. Arrays are a, a very big start to a very big concept in question and honestly a really fun tool when you get to when you get to start loving it right now it might be kind of a love-hate relationship i promise you'll probably come soon to admire them maybe at least befriend them possibly maybe friend them on facebook just facebook maybe just twitter whatever but eventually you get to know them so this is a raise and then finally layla i do want to get to that question why could we actually reassign if it was a const that's a very good question because we technically did not reassign the array. If I was to reassign favorite treats array to something different, now I'm going to get in trouble. Because what I did here is that I reassigned a constant variable. Here I, re I reassigned inside a constant variable. Remember, an array is a container. We can't reassign the container, but we can reassign things inside of the container. I'm just seeing a lot of frowns right now, and I know I'm ruining everybody's Monday, and I apologize. But this is it. These are arrays. These are all of its little quirks and everything. So um, I'm going to keep bustling through one last thing here. I know, I know it's a lot of information, but I do want to get to the end of it here. And then finally, uh, you can change the indexes. You can change that to beach ball. That's what we do here. Final thing I wanted to show you is that they do also have tricks up their sleeve. Kind of already went over some of them. Arrays have specific functions that we want to use. The first one being the includes. This one is going to return a Boolean, whether or not something is actually contained inside of the array. Dot includes. Someone already asked, do we put anything inside those parentheses? We absolutely do. This function is going to ask, what exactly are you looking for? In this case, we're looking for bone. This one will return, return true because bone is at index one. The value of bone is at index one. Another trick or another function is the index of, index of bone. This is going to return the index. So hence it will return the number one to uh, whatever is capturing it, usually a variable or you can console log it. Finally, the last thing is the push. This is how we add things to the array. So we're going to actually add stick to the fave treats array. 
How we do that is we come in here, we say a fave treats dot push, and we say stick. Now, tell me, when I push something into this array, what index will it be at? Who can tell me? Three. 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 Very good. It'll push it to the end push of that array. So if we run this now, uh, making sure to fix everything right, we actually print out stick. We push stick into the array. It went to the very end. And then we console logged the third index to give us that value, which is stick. All right. Sorry, let's go over the questions there. Oh, go ahead. 17, uh, the line 17, does, that takes away tennis ball? Completely. It does. It will. Okay. It does. It will. It just changes. It reassigns this string, tennis ball, to beach ball. So it reassigns it. Changes it. Whatever word you want to use. I'm just going to say yeah, reassigns. But you, you're absolutely correct. So a uh, quick question. So if you add, uh, if you push a new array on that and try to get the length overall. Will it then be four or will it Oh, for after three? you do the push? Uh-huh. Absolutely. Very good. So we'll console log the length here. And now our length is going to be four. I'll remove this other console log up here just so there's no confusion. But yes, our length will now be four. Very good call out. Before that, because we go one line after the other, so if we console log our length before the push, we'll actually get a three. So it'll be three and then it'll be four. Because remember, we go sequentially, one line after the other. Next is can you keep pushing new arrays or is that a one time? Go for code? it. Nope, go for it. You can push as much as you want into these containers. I just don't know enough dog toys. Uh, tug toy, whatever. Toy. Um, my socks. Oh, and a duck. You do duck. Yeah. Duck. There we go. But anyway, that is what we can do. So we can keep pushing as much as we want into that array. So now we see our length is at seven. What about that one? Um, that one ball that makes all those loud noises. The one you that when it's rolling, the um. The wiggle wag, something like that. That one, I'll call it, there you go. I'll add wiggle wag. I love that. That's a great term. Those are Perfect. so annoying though. Don't uh, you agree? Well, it's not annoying me right now as a word because I love the word wiggle wag. <laughs> uh, great branding. See, uh, All right. Uh, just quickly, see how you did every, every additional push there as a new line of code. Could you just write each new toy with a comma in one push? Stay no, there. that unfortunately does not work. Right okay. now, we are going to have to just do the pushes one after the other. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so there we go. So if we do that, it is going to bring us, oh gosh. Yeah. I would say right now, don't do that. Okay. I think JavaScript is being actually nice right now. Kyle? Okay. Yes. Can you uh, push a variable? You absolutely can, because inside of a variable is a string. So we'll push the string inside of that variable. So if I wanted to push pet name inside of there, and then I wanted to console log my fourth index. How do you push a string? It'll just curl up and it won't do anything. That was supposed <laughs> to be a joke. <laughs> Well, in this case, it has to do something because that's a very, very good question. So if you push a string, it actually it pushes rope. that variable. There you go. Yeah, it will push this string. Bella is an awesome dog. So actually push the content of that variable into the array. So yes, absolutely, you can push a variable. Great, great question there. So then I, I, I read the chapter. So you have to use a different method to push an array into another array? Correct. OK. We'll go over some of those more complex ones as we move on. But yes, yeah, please do keep reading that material. Uh, learn all those magic tricks uh, that you can do with arrays. But yes, you can definitely push a lot of content at once into an array. Today, I'm just 
pushing on you the push method right now. Um, I have a question. Um, when you, so like, you know, uh, I put it in the chat, but like when you do like all these, like, you know, push, uh, like pop, you know, like all the things that you can change about your array. Um, but then there's no like record of it, you know, like you, there's no like, oh, your array is now equal to this, um, is the only way to check your new array, like with console.log. Um, Absolutely, because if you are in a large algorithm, which these codes can get up to a couple thousand lines of code, you don't want those constant status checks. You want your computer just to do it and tell me at the end what the output is. So that's why if you want to, as a human, see a status update, you have to ask for it. And how we ask for it is the console log. Okay. Yeah, because like when I was doing the like exercises, I was like, I really wish like that there was like a visual um reminder of what i changed because i feel like I, the more changes you make the messier it gets to keep it track of in your head and you absolutely can yeah that's but just like art it's completely up to you as the artist the developer to do that so it means that you just have to put those console logs as much as you want for your own benefit so yes it just does the yeah, unfortunately the program doesn't do it automatically you have to you have to tell the computer what to do great question Anybody else? We are at time here. So I have a I'll question. Take one more question. Go ahead. Can we convert the string to an array or array to string? Is it possible? You absolutely can. Um, you are going to want to use functions to do that. Yeah. Um, I, oh, um, I would recommend looking through the documentation to see how to do that. But uh, I always forget the one in JavaScript right now. I think it's like two char array or something like that. Let's see. Let's see if I do that right. No, I think I'm doing that. Technically, it'd be split. Do, 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 do. Yeah, technically, you can split it. So there we go. Now I just turned Bell is an awesome dog into an entire array of characters, which are individual strings. So that's how you do it, is do the split method. But yep. OK, thank you. Absolutely. And I'll show you one more magic trick if you just join them together like that. It just turns it back into a string. Magic. All right. I do unfortunately have to cut us off. If you do have any very, very pressing questions, um, do, 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 do. well, I'll answer this last one. When I was practicing with an array slice, I was like, bunch of them. okay. Um, yeah. Uh, if you do have any very pressing questions, feel free to DM me or also book time with me on Calendarly. I am open for one-on-one -on -one sessions to talk more about these concepts. Uh, but we are at time and I wanna give you as much time as you can in your groups. And I apologize for going a little bit over time today. Again, I will be back on at, oh, we're gonna make it 8.15 today, just because I'm gonna give you guys that time back with your groups. So I will be back on for studio at 8.15. Please, please come in and check in. Um, if you have anything to do at 8.30, feel free to log off then. But other than that, thank you very much for staying up with me. Thank you for all your participation. Uh, I know there's a lot of information. I hope we can rekindle our friendship next class. I know this was a lot, but I hope you did enjoy it. Other than that, enjoy your breakout sessions and I'll see you back here for studio at 8.15 tonight.